Shirley Manson is with us. Shirley, it's so good to see you. It's freaky to see you. I haven't seen you in a long, long time. It's really lovely to see you. I have so many amazing memories of you and what we all accomplished together. And so this is a lovely surprise. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I brought a little um, artifact with me. I don't know if you can see this. Well, it's us. Yeah, that would be a picture. Um, wow. Backstage wow. at RFK Stadium. Incredible. The HF Festival back in the yeah. day. I think that was 95, maybe. No festival experience really has ever matched that. That was just one of the most intense, insane experiences of our career. Yeah. Um, so the new Garbage album uh, is coming out on Friday, and we'll talk about that in a second. But, you know, I was thinking back to the day, and the first time we met, which was outside of the Black Cat in Washington, wow. D.C. And you guys, well, I had a friend, uh, Bob Bortnick was his name, and he worked pretty closely with you. And, you know, Bob sent me that debut album before it came out. And I just remember being so blown away and so excited about, you know, what was ahead for Garbage as a band. And now here we are almost 30 years later. It's just incredible. <laughs> But as I recall, you guys played a little, you know, it was an underplay. It was a little club, the Black Cat. I don't know if you remember that night. Oh, not. yes, I remember it. I think there were tequila shots involved afterwards. Probably, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I guess my first question, Shirley, is, you know, did you ever imagine that, uh, you know, you'd still be doing this all this time later? Uh, I really did not. I have to say that even now, I kind of have to pinch myself. It seems so surreal that this is my life. And you were about to embark on a very extensive tour, part of which in the United States is, is a bill sharing uh, with Alanis Morissette and Liz Fair. And then uh, there's uh, so you know singular headlining garbage dates around the world. How are you going to prepare for that? How, how does, I don't know what it was like <laughs> uh, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, what your routine was, but how has, has that changed with the current climate? You know, that's a good question. I, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, we've never been a band really that, that prepares very well. Um, I know lots of bands go into physical training and they have, dietitians and nutritionists and this that the next thing we're doing we just kind of bumble on, <laughs> bumble into rehearsal a few weeks before going out on the road and, and hope for the best you know um we've been very lucky that we've all stayed relatively healthy you know and I don't know I've not, I've missed one show in my entire career um wow. I've been really blessed I mean I think I was meant to do this you know my body still works well I'm really lucky um and yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how we've done it, to be honest. It's kind of unusual, but I'm grateful for it. And Madison is still home for, for Butch and Steve and Duke. And are you um, in Edinburgh? Well, A, very good pronunciation, Edinburgh. Um, but no, I'm in Los Angeles, as is Butch. He's in Los Angeles and Steve is in uh, uh, like Palm, Palm Springs as well. So we're all in California. It's only Duke that's left in Madison, Wisconsin. But that's okay. still always thought of as our home, you know, our, our base. Yeah. Um, no Gods, No Masters is the name of the new album, the first new garbage record in five years. And one thing that hasn't changed, and when I listen to Wolves for the first time, is those big booming guitars. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I think the band have done an amazing job on this record it's still pretty fierce sounding you know for a band that have been together for s the length of time that we have yeah to still be able to surprise each other I think sort of extraordinary I think we're, there's a lot of energy on this record I have no idea where it comes from I don't even understand how we can still get it up you know what I mean it's like how are we still getting this up <laughs> but we get it up and I think we're all really proud of the record and it's exciting and I think we surprised ourselves more than anyone that we could make a record like this. 
There was a period there, and 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but I think um, around 2005, at the end of the Bleed Like Me tour, there was a long break. Yes, there was a very long break. I think um, it was actually a break of about five years um, that we all took off, um, and for a variety of different reasons. One being Butch's production career. One being that I got a job in, on in television for two years. Um, and then my mother got very ill. And so there were reasons why we just didn't get back together again for an, uh, such a significant amount of time. Uh, and also we were burnt out. We, are, we had seen our career, which had, you know, blossomed in the 90, mid 90s and then started to struggle in the early 2000s. And we were just beaten down by what you know, felt like constant failing. We were constantly being told by our record label that we weren't performing, um, we weren't selling the way they'd hoped, and it just became really depressing. Mm -hmm. You know, to be to be sort of uh, distilled down to to record sales is just disheartening for artists. I think so. We were we needed a break, and we took a break, and then we got back together in, in 2012. And actually, this period is longer than the period before we took a hiatus. So it's really surreal, you know? It's, a, it's amazing that we're that's still a, here. That's, that's a difficult thing for an artist to go through when you, you get that pressure from a record company and, you know, their priorities are not what your priorities are. Um, I, I think uh, there's this one band, Sylvan Esso, perhaps you're familiar with Yes, of with course, them. yeah. Um, they responded uh, to those demands by writing a song called 3.30 uh, <laughs> because they were told you need to make a single and it has to be three minutes and 30 seconds long. Uh, it's quite yeah. funny. Um, yeah, I mean, it starts to get a bit like a sausage factory or something like that. You know, the, just the joy and the creativity sucked out of the room and it becomes about, you know, fitting into a template, you know, it, and it's just not good for artists who are alternative artists. They don't fit into that that template very well. Uh, I know one thing that um, you dipped a toe in is is the podcasting world. Um, the Jump with Shirley Manson. Um, I have to tell you, the episode I enjoyed the most was the one with Liz Fair. Mm. And it made me wonder a little bit, Shirley. Um, you know, back in those days in the 90s when how do I put this? Was there a competitive spirit between not only, I, let me say, female artists, you fronting, you know, a band and, and Liz Fair and, and many others, you know, I think of, and I may be completely misreading this after all those years, but uh, like the lyrics to Stupid Girl, for example, um, was there a certain animosity between female artists striving to excel in a, in a rock male dominated world? Well, I think there was certainly, a, it was a position of stress that everyone was under because we were taught from an early age that there was only ever one room for one alpha female. Um, I was very lucky in that I came from a background. I'd worked with other female musicians. I also was lucky in that we were selling a lot of records. So I never really personally felt under threat or um, I wasn't in competition with anyone. I was in competition with myself, to be honest. And I'd also, you know, I love women. I, I'm an ally of women. Um, uh, but I did notice amongst some other artists, a lot of, uh, like I said, st stress. And um, that resulted sometimes in snooty behavior, maybe coming from other artists. Mm -hmm. But it was not something I ever really felt myself. Uh, well, we are very excited about uh, this new album. And I have to tell you, maybe you can speak with somebody at the label because I have not received the whole record yet. What? <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I look forward to hearing it. Um, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. I'm embarrassed. I'm so sorry. That's ridiculous. You know? 
that's that's uh who's your a, rep yeah well should we give name names no we don't probably know. not probably <laughs> destroy them it'd be awful <laughs> jesus christ um but also i look forward to seeing you and uh when the uh alanis morissette garbage liz fair tour comes through columbia maryland uh i will be there to uh knock on your door perhaps well bob in all seriousness you must come backstage and say hi to everyone and we can have a tequila shot for old time's sake okay. i think that's only fair don't disappoint me all i right. would love that all right we thank you, you for, yes so thank you for taking some time it's really great to see you again shirley manson you too you too bob great <laughs> to see you okay bye all right be safe and i'll see you in maryland okay <laughs>